Hi, I'm Chelsea with the Fat Quarter Shop, and I'm here in Portland at Spring Quilt Market, and I'm sitting with Heather Ross of Wyndham Fabrics. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what's in your booth? Sure, sure. This is the, um, we have a little play tent at our house set up for my daughter right now, and it just makes such a wonderful display. I found that I was sort of sneaking into her play space and using it as like an extension of my workspace and throwing things over it and standing back. So it finally dawned on me that I could set one up in my yeah. booth, basically. And my assistant, Megan, who's awesome, I said, how can we get something to look like birch bark? Mm -hmm. And we got Wyndham to give us these bolt tubes, and she covered them with paper. And yeah, they look perfect. Great job, mm -hmm. I know. She did a fantastic, she got really into it. She got really into it. And can you tell us about this quilt? Oh, sure. So the quilt is, uh, is actually based on a design by Ray, from mm -hmm. Made by Ray. And we, um, she had done this amazing rainbow quilt with one of my older fabric lines, but we knew because I always use exactly the same colors that it would we look knew good. This one as well. <laughs> we were this one too. So I asked her to do this for me. I'm not a quilter per se. I love quilts, but I'm not. I don't make a lot of them. And I think Ray has a really fun. She's similar to me, and that we're both really sort of in love with those icons of the '70s. And mm -hmm. a rainbow is a great example of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's like a beautiful rainbow. Yeah. Yeah, she did a fantastic job. And then uh, we did a little blow up of one of the prints for the banner. And then the whole idea behind, behind this line, Briar Rose, was sort of a reflection on the last couple of years of becoming a mom and then going back to work. And we renovated this old house in the country. And so that's me with a little apron full of honey looking over at a my little baby who's <laughs> hanging out with it. It's a working mother. Yeah. Kind of, yes. that's the, right? The honey a bee is the bee. ultimate yes. working. Yeah, yeah. So it's about that. It's about sort of finding a balance between work and family and yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the prints in the collection? Sure. What so there's that one. That was sort of the anchor print in my mind. But then there's another one that stole the show. This guy right here. Uh, it's a little frog learning how to swim from his mom. It's really sweet. Yeah, I wanted. I always try to do at least one print where there's a, like sort of a lot going on and conversational. And the scale was initially meant to be a little larger, but it, it was cool. We shrunk it down, so the details are really small. So here's like a little mouse picnic. And, a little swimmy and lots of really fun cute little novelties and then I really wanted to do something with the cricket and I really wanted to do something with some florals so we did this really basic very sort of 70s style calico and I've wanted to do a strawberry print for years and this seemed like the time to do it. perfect collection. Yeah I felt like it really was so that's perfect. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about um, where you get your inspiration for your collections? They're always very whimsical and magical. They are, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, I always try to look for, I try to pay attention when I'm just hanging out with my family or walking around outside or whatever. I try to find the things, notice the things that make me happy when I see them, right? Like a wild strawberry or a little flower or a frog. Or a little or, baby. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, my theory is if they make me happy when I see them out there in the world, they're going to make people happy on fabric. Mm -hmm. And so do you illustrate most of your prints before by hand? Yeah, I work. I usually do a lot of sketching first. Mm -hmm. And I try, <laughs> I've gotten better about this. Um, in you know having done a lot of fabric lines really trying to plan how I can take a, a little image like a strawberry or a mushroom and really build it into a print that's graphically successful so I do a lot of sketching a lot of preliminary sketching and then I scan everything in and I do the final artwork in Photoshop. Okay great um, and tell us about your background and how your childhood influenced your current design. I spent a lot of time outside and I sort of had all of these imaginary worlds that were around me. You know, everyone had a personality, every bush, every plant, every flower. Mm -hmm. And I still feel that way about the natural world. And I feel like fabric <laughs> is a really great way to tell that story because you have all that space, you know, and you can sort of, you can amp the colors up and give the little creatures personalities. It's a really wonderful platform when you have that sort of obsessive thing about yeah. that, the natural world. And um, so you don't quilt, but you do sew. I do a little bit yeah. of quilting, but I, okay. I do I do quite a little quite a bit of sewing. But in the last two years, not as much because I became a yes. mom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So everyone says, "Oh, yeah. she must have the cutest clothes." I'm like, "Yeah, from the Gap." <laughs> <laughs> Where everyone else gets their clothes too. Right, right. But this, luckily, this market is such a generous place. People have sent her some really beautiful things, but. Um, but I don't really sew a lot of clothing now, but I have in the past. 
most of what I'm doing now is uh, stuff for my house, you know, curtains and like practical. Yeah, yeah very practical. And do you stuff. use a lot of your prints? I try. I, I design with children in mind, so it doesn't bother me too much when I can't find a use for them in my own life outside of <laughs> outside of, outside of, of my the daughter. children. Yeah, yes, definitely. Yeah. And um, so you grew up in the country. I did. And yeah. you moved to the city. I did. What was that transition like? Well, my friend Danielle puts it well. She says, you know, there's no wilderness like like the wilderness that is New York City, and it's really true. There's like you get that same feeling of sort of an anonymity and a feeling a sense of being very small and in a big, big world. In a big, big world. But we also we made the decision a few years ago to buy this old rambling old house in the country in the Catskills in in a pretty economically depressed. It's not a very fancy part of upstate New York, you know. It's a, small town, sort of similar to the one I grew up in, maybe a little bigger than the one I grew up in, actually. And um, the same sort of influences, bad and good, and a really beautiful place in the, in the mountains, and an old house that really desperately needed love, and on a lot of land near a lake. And we bought it, and we've spent a lot of time and energy and money renovating it. <laughs> and so now we do have a place in the country. So. Um, we, you know, this last weekend for Mother's Day was a great example. We went up on Friday night and came home on Sunday night and spent the whole weekend, whole weekend you know, outside enjoying spring. And it really, living in New York, really sort of amplifies your appreciation for the natural world because you're like, oh, it's like a single flower <laughs> coming out of the sidewalk. It's really, so it's good. It's a good balance. I love art and design. I love good food. I love shopping, I love mm -hmm. clothes. So being in the city certainly has its benefits. And then, of course, um, having lived my whole life, I think, in economically depressed places before moving to New York City, it's also an amazing thing to be in a place where there's enough work to go around, there are enough jobs to go around, and, and being surrounded by that has been a really good experience for me because it was always sort of about scraping it together, you know, before that. So it's nice to be in a place where there are opportunities everywhere, no matter who you are, and that's the great thing about the city. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. You're very welcome. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. Oh, one more thing. Can you tell us a little bit about your yes, book? Yes, this is I my book, forgot. Heather Ross Prince. I, I took some of the more uh, sought-after collectible prints that I've done like, in the past. Because, unfortunately, there are very few opportunities to ever reprint them. And yeah. I packaged them, I bundled them together in a book on a disc. So you can print them on fabric, or you can print them on your own printer, mm -hmm. or you can print them you know, on one of these wallpaper, you can frame them. Mm -hmm. There's even some pages with some perforation yeah. in them, which is okay. awesome. I just actually made that, I bought some like really cheap little tin canisters at Ikea and wrapped them with the paper and they're so cool. cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know, I keep destroying books, ripping out my own <laughs> my own pages. And then I also have been gotten really interested in some other crafts, like um, paper crafts, like making my own lanterns and wallpaper and it's so much fun you know you can do so much it, I really love this movement towards uh, desktop design you know it's very cool what you can accomplish with an inkjet printer and a pair of scissors and some glue so that was kind of what was driving this book there's also a chapter on how to design fabric in the technique that I use which is you know very photoshop dependent okay yeah good resource yeah great resource and Heather Ross a rather weekend sewing which is my sewing book with SDC has just come out of paperback. Okay, well, great to know. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, for Thank more information, you. visit us on our website at www.fatquartershop.com. Yeah.